<laughs> we should make a parody to Highway to the Danger Zone. Okay, we're going live. live. About live streaming in the Danger we Zone. Live. Well, apparently we've already been live for six seconds. Ooh. See? That right there was the Danger Zone. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Cleveland. It's my friend from Cleveland, Ohio. Is it snowing in Cleveland? Could be. Uh, yeah, I heard there's some wacky weather <laughs> recently. Who's got their audio on? That would be me. I'm, I'm stopping it. All right. I'm going to... I should really just close down. What? Susan Perth says, Hi, you two dorks. <laughs> just, just say it like it is. <laughs> Don't hold back. <laughs> that's that that's funny are you a dork you and i are dorks are we <laughs> john is too but the, we're amazing i don't, know. I don't dorks. know that anybody knows that yet that's so funny well one could assume <laughs> you work here yeah yeah that's true it's pretty much pretty much the the vibe <laughs> Dork Central. <laughs> Dork Central. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Is everybody going to felt or just watch? I'm curious. Curious to know. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't have too much to say. I could just start. Um, I've got... I've got a piece of foam insulation, but I put some... Um, I put some pre felt on it because I hate the color of the foam insulation. It's like, uh, <laughs> what? It's like, it's a bad purple, pink, weird color. And I have, I'm going to use the Fiber Fairy supplies so that, you know, I'm using what you guys have. We will need a little bit of black. If you have carob, um, that's real helpful. And really, but any other additional locks you want to put in what if you have a fiber art bundle like really you don't you don't have to stick with this this is this is the the necessities so have fun have fun with it um someone, with whatever you have someone will be felting for the first three minutes and then get lost and then <laughs> and then go back <laughs> felting till i fall behind a lot of watchers yeah it's all okay. good okay yes either way is is going to be fun so I have made several at this point. I'm so just this one has a little bit of a different shape and the um the angle of the branch is different. Um this one's pretty. This is the one I just made this week. Mm. I like that one. And that one I think I made uh, before the fiber fairy, when we were figuring out the um, the fiber fairy. Someone say getting double talk. I don't know if that means the sound is. Is my head still big? Um, no, I just switched it. Okay. Um, double talk like there's an echo. Could someone confirm I'm... how the sound is? I do not have a wren joke. I don't. <gasps> I don't. Oh. I'm not prepared. I just showed up. <laughs> Wren facts. We need Paul Beardsley. Yes. Any birder wants to contribute Wren um, information, that would be awesome. I know very little about Wrens. They're I feel like... <clears throat> no double talk. Sounds great. Sound yeah. is fine. Okay. okay. Sound is good on my end. Okay. Excellent. All right. We'll just get started. We'll probably have a sound check every time. <laughs> Um, I'm so what's cool too is you can use the yarn and actually this um, I forget what this one's called but this one with the blue and green in it looks really good in this project there's Paul Beardsley oh good Paul you're in charge of bird facts yes that would be awesome 88 species of wren. See, I don't even need to wow. work anymore. People do all my work <laughs> for me, and I count on them. <clears throat> and I am running out of material. <laughs> Very good, Lori. 
I'm going to make, um, we're making a California wren. I mean, a Carolina wren. <laughs> Where California, a California wren. came from? I think because of the California comments. Okay, this is my template. It's interesting. I had this template, but this one is slightly bigger. So I'm going to use that because this one was a tiny bit small. This is the original, not that it matters. Okay. They love the new yarn ties on the packaging. Good. We do too. Bird fact, the bend in the leg is the ankle, not the knee. And it's what make that makes them able to stay perched while they're asleep. The weight oh, on that joint wow. causes yeah. their claws to clutch. Yeah, their knee is up in here. Up up in their up in their body. I've got to wake up and hit the ground running if I'm going to keep up with everybody. <laughs> and someone else said they'd believe it when they see it. <clears throat> I don't even... I'm out I of a know, job. I know, you are. I'm out of a job. Well, run and roam. <laughs> run and... Run and roam. I, I, I'm going to let you know before I head down. So oh. got those radar right there. That's where your camera view is. So keeping things to the left a little bit is good. So everything's okay. good. Yes. I planned it that way. Awesome. <laughs> the Ren template is... Here, John, can you take this? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's that order. Um, the Ren template was on the newsletter, and it's the newsletter is tagged... In my last post, I think. Yes. Or second to last. On because Facebook, I... there is a... It's, it is tagged. But it's a PDF that you can download. And if you don't have a printer... You could um, look at it or take a piece of paper and hold it up to your computer screen and trace it. Oh, you think so? Ish. I mean. Yeah, I guess so. Size may not be quite right, but right. it would give you an outline. If we do want a lot smaller, will we run into lots of teeny tiny big problems? Don't know. Someone use tracing paper on their monitor. Great minds think alike. Um, oh, do the wren smaller? Or the whole thing? Or the whole thing? Uh, I don't know. Let us know. I, 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 I tend to work on things at a size that lets me use the fiber, like... And, and not make it too fussy for me. Mm -hmm. That's just me, though. I know sometimes people want stuff life-size. But we paint... I mean, we, we're, we're painting, basically. Um, so it's, it's, it's really exciting, actually. I'm going to share with you guys a lot of theor theories about 2D art. Um, well, not a ton, but whatever we come across. Um, because the way that I paint with oils is really similar to the way that I build up um, the needle felting, the needle felting image. So I am gonna um, kind of talk about some some of those, not, I don't know, theories, practices. There's no rules, but um, you know some of the ideas that help us create the um, the perspective we want, the depth, the contrast, um, the the composition, like the focus. So. Um, the first thing that I want to do is the background. And I have been using um, Dune, Wolf, and Sea Mist. What do you, what do you need? Yeah. How tall is your, just for reference, how tall is your uh, We cut, oh, the actual yeah, wren? Yeah, like on your, Okay. either on the finished piece or. Yep. yep. So I wouldn't. Your branch, this is a little small. Like you're gonna, you're gonna freestyle your branch in there. I, I, I wouldn't worry. The branch on the template is just to give you an idea of shape. Um, but my wren from head to foot is five inches. And if I go from tail tip to beak, it is seven and a half inches. And the pre-felt that we had in the Fiber Fairy. Yeah, can you show the thickness of that also? 
like the thickness? size of it and then yeah just how thick the actual pre-filled is um it's about a quarter inch i guess um we cut these at approximately 12 by 15 um i have been not i've been kind of ignoring the bottom it's a little long for the for the composition but this is just what worked without waste so um i've been kind of ignoring the bottom of the, <laughs> of, the of the picture so for the sky, these are this is your lights bundle. Uh, this is uh, nut, I believe. Yep, nut, sea mist, wolf, dune, and Marrakesh. These are for a little bit later, but these can make our sky color. If you have hand carters, I'll show you how to load the hand carter. If you don't have hand carters, you're going to grab the end and pull each one. <clears throat> and then you're just going to restack. Where did John go? He left us. Yeah. We got stuff to do. Oh, he went to ship, I think. The male cactus wrens, which I believe is the cactus wren is the state bird of Arizona. Oh, okay. Um I think someone said they build two the males build two and three nests while the female incubates. Then when the eggs hatch, she goes to the next nest to lay more while the male raises the young oh wow they're very efficient they are very efficient they're like we're getting these babies out there <laughs> whatever it takes three houses it's like the um you know what that is it's when people get divorced and they use the nest it's not it's totally different <laughs> but there is a way to co-parent where the parent leaves oh, okay and the kids are and always stays, in the house yeah. Okay, if you have hand carters, you're going to do the same. I would do two batches of this, whether you're doing it by hand or with hand carters. You want two batches. You might need a little bit more, but especially if you're doing it by hand, you probably need three batches. Have I lost everyone already? I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. There was a question about your felting surface. Yeah, I'm using the the two inch um, the two inch hard foam, and I I was explaining that I put a piece of uh, pre felt on top because I don't like the color of it. Oh, some people like the Pepto Bismol pink color. Yeah. <laughs> so that is like insulate foam insulation. What is mm -hmm. it? Foam insulation. Foam insulation. Yeah. I was thinking I want to get two pieces. Um, for us to use on the new table. Oh, like, like whole, big. Yeah. That's a good it's going to really help us with our secret projects. <laughs> I feel like I got, I had a little something on my carters <laughs> that is now in here. And then I want to mix one. What did I do? I want to mix one a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use the same three colors and I'm going to add a tiny bit of um, Serafino white to it. I want sometimes in a, um, in a background, if it's, if it's a sky, you kind of want it to get a little lighter as you get closer to the horizon because that is there being more atmosphere in the distance. That's um, one way to think about it. So I'm going to use a little more dune, a little bit of Serafina white. And I think actually I'm going to mix the second batch of colors while we're here mixing um, the colors that go in the foreground. Trisha Scott said she refers to any yucky color as puce. Oh, ooh, that's <laughs> that's a good word. <laughs> what is puce? I know, but it's a, it's a mix of <laughs> it's definitely a mix of things. Ooh. <laughs> so I'm calling this my sky light color. Hopefully. Not puce. <laughs> what I like about wolf 
Dune and and Sea Mist or yes, Sea Mist is um so Sea Mist and Dune are sort of color complementary colors on the on the color wheel. Um, blue, purple is the complement to yellow. So they and then we've got just straight up gray, which is what Wolf is. But by not just using gray, by using the two complements, um, we're getting a little bit more of an interesting, interesting color. So it ends up gray, uh, but it has a little more life to it. Atmospheric perspective. Thank you. Is when particles in the air <laughs> reflecting the light is denser as it is closer to your eye line. Lovely. I will not retain that, but yes. I wish I would. Laura brings, Laura brings the science. Oh, yeah. Laura always um, has the, the, the good facts. Also, Wren symbolized enthusiasm in life. And Judy said, no wonder you make them so beautifully. <laughs> oh, that was my enthusiasm. <laughs> um, I am. I am. I'm feeling very enthusiastic. Uh, let's felt a little bit. Let's felt a little bit before we do the next the next colors. I'm gonna use um, the first blend and I'm just gonna lay it on here. I'm trying to pull, whenever I do 2D, whether it's wet felting or needle felting, I try to pull what would sort of be a paint stroke by just grabbing the end, um, pulling a thin stroke or wash or brush and a little bit of crisscross helps eliminate um, straight lines. The wren in the reference picture has a bright blue sky and I kind of like to go more muted because then the wren pops. Mm. But really, I, I mean, I'm excited to see what you guys do because there's there can be a ton of interpretation of this of this image. I'm going to leave a little bit of a hole where I think the wren will be. I'm going to felt this down and then I'll check with my template. So I can um, get a visual. Okay, I want him to be about here. And I also probably will go, when I use this, I will go outside of it so we will end up even a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to fill in here and here a little bit more. And these little wispy pieces can infringe on where the where the wren is. Um, you don't have to be precise to, you know, this is why we do the background first, because then we're going to build the foreground over it, and that will look um, pretty accurate. I think I've got a bald spot up here. Lisa can... Durant said her daughter's name is Wren. Oh, so beautiful. So she's making it for her room. Wonderful. I'm just going to go straight to the punch tool. Oh, that's going to be lovely. So uh, a standard frame size is 11 by 14. So these will be, you will be able to find uh, ready-made frames. Mm -hmm. The lighter goes at the top. Uh, no, I've only used the darker color so okay. far. The lighter goes towards the bottom because that is the atmospheric perspective. <clears throat> Need that. The pen tool just gets it a little more, a little more stuck. It is already pretty. Someone said it already looks beautiful. <laughs> just blending those colors, though, you get like the yeah, coolest. I love designing these projects because the colors are are so much fun to to figure out. Now I have some space down here. I'm gonna use my lighter color, and I'm also gonna mix, in one of them, I mixed um, Dune and Serafina White, mm -hmm. and I did some cloud suggestions without being too, you know, cloudy. 
So I'm letting the fringe overlap so that is what kind of helps it to blend. Oh, this color was blended better than my other color. Do you frame them under glass? I so far have not. Um, it's sort of nice to see the fiber not squished. Yeah, I think so too. Here's another little compositional um, consideration. When you have an animal facing the side, you want you don't want him perfectly centered. You want a little more space in front of his face. That way, he doesn't look doesn't especially if you frame it, he doesn't look trapped, you know, like like a mime stuck in a. <laughs> so it's okay if the tail, you know, kind of comes towards this edge a little bit, and I have like a palm, like four fingers of space from the beak to the left side. So I'm gonna put a little more of my light sky color right in here. Would you use any kind of glue to keep it in the frame? If you um, can tack, like just at the edges, staple this to a backing um, foam core or um, you know anything acid-free mat, mm -hmm. then your backing goes into your frame, and then you you use frame tacks to hold your backing in, and that's enough to that's enough to hold it. Paul Beardsley has his frame in a shadow box. So nice. That the fibers aren't smushed. Mm -hmm. Then it can still be protected by glass. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. So this takes, you know, to really get all of this um, well felted takes more stabbing than I'm going to do, you know, while you guys are sitting here watching me. But this background can, you can stab this anytime, you know, down the road. So, um, I have to look in my, I can see my picture. So I have a light spot here, but that's okay. I think I'll put a cloud there. Okay. So I'm going to mix some Serafina white and Dune just to tone it down a tad. I think the day we decided to do this, when I stepped outside, there was a wren on my patio. Aww. I don't see them very often. I don't mind if this has a little bit of variation. Greek legend says the wren became the king of the birds by hiding on the eagle's back, which made him fly higher than the eagle. Went along for the ride. Interesting. You don't have to do this. Um, when I end up putting this on, uh, it's nice to get a little bit of cloud kind of right around the beak because then that lightens this up and then the head um, pops off. So I'm going to put another, another little cloud right in here. So there's a few things to consider and I, you know, I think I've talked about this before in other videos, but, um, In general, we're going to use contrast, um, complementary colors, uh, saturation. So contrast is a difference in value. And really, it's the more important part of painting. We get kind of caught up in the color of everything. But to make something um, be representative of 3D, you need the light and dark. 
you need all the contrast. And so when I'm preparing these, that's kind of how I'm, I organize the fiber so that you know, like these are my lights that I can blend together, my midtones and, and my darks. Um, and by using, like, so let's say we want the Wren's head in this case to be the, the point of focus. Wherever you want to draw the eye, you're going to want higher contrast, um, higher, de like sharper definition. Um, and so in other words, if you put a ton of bright colors down here with real sharp edges, that's going to be where the eye goes and not here. So we're looking for high contrast, um, sharper definition, brighter, more saturated colors. So the more muted colors, um, kind of fade away, more saturated colors come forward. And then also, um, complementary colors really catch the eye. So sometimes I'll just, I'll just throw red in, um, on something that's green, you know, not even without much reason, but just, just to make that, that pop. So we'll play with those things a little bit as we go through this and you will see. We were talking about the contrast and having the head mm -hmm. pop. Mm -hmm. Apparently you said the head pops off because people thought that was very <laughs> funny. <laughs> off the canvas. <laughs> okay. I'm going to save like all these little mixes we make. We might need to use um, elsewhere in the project, like on the belly or somewhere else. Uh, we're getting we're getting to the more fun part. So now I want to mix this bot this bottom area. And first, I put um, I just kind of put a general mid tone, and then we can play with the, then we can play with the locks. So that is going to be from our second batch. And I used well, it's a kind of a mix. I used current. Nut and olive, I believe. So again, these will, these colors will sort of neutralize each other, but it will be warmer. It will definitely be warmer because now we've moved towards brown and green from gray and the complement to purple, which is yellow. So this will have a slightly different tone, which we want uh, because what, what we have here, I need to get one of these more accessible. This is the most recent one that I've done. Nope, I want to use the most recent one. Ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> um, we want this to look far away and this to look a little bit more like, kind of like the wren, like we're down, hunkered down in the woods and we're looking out and we just happen to see a wren on you know, the branch of a, of a shrub or something. Okay, so we're gonna do two batches of this as well. This, not as important to be super well blended. I mean, this guy, you could blend until it's a very even color, um, but this is gonna get all the playfulness of the locks on it. And we want it to look um, kind of like, like foliage that isn't super well defined. So a little bit of variation in this blend is actually a good thing. It's like light and like light bouncing around, dark leaves. Any questions so far? Someone wondered if you used the felting machine for the background of that last one. Oh, did, did you notice that? <laughs> I sure did. Actually, I, after I got this on, I put it through and then I did the press and then I did the bird. You pressed it too, right? I think the pressing. Oh yeah, the pressing. Also. Yeah. But the first one that I had out, I didn't. Um, was just all by hand. Good painting tips. People are mm -hmm. thankful there's, for the painting tips and color theory. There's so much to learn, you guys. It's not. It's not like some just. Oh, I'm a talent. You know. I, innate like I understand how everything works it's there's so much to learn and you can learn and you can apply it to what you're doing and then 
um, maybe grow in your your art, you know, your 2D and 3D, really. Mm-hmm. But but there there's definitely certain certain concepts that help 3 2D um, ideas. So these initial pieces, I want to put my fringe facing up so that it gets real wispy into the um, into the cloud area. I don't want like a, I'm not making a sharp horizon line. The horizon's really far away. Maybe it's even, you know, blocked by this, this greenery that we're looking at. And those colors again were? Current, olive, and nut. Okay. Trisha would love to be in your head just for an hour. <laughs> you would. It's fun in there. <laughs> Are you saying you'd want out after an hour, Trisha? <laughs> well, it's so funny you said that because I had this long conversation in my head with myself one night about everybody here at work and whose head and like, because I was thinking about all of our perspectives okay. and I was like, what would it be like? to be in Jennifer's head, Kyla's head. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. because we all, we all, you know, we have different personalities and different experiences and different ways. And um, it was, it was a fun little daydream that I had. (laughs) And then certain, certain people are more foreign to you, to your own head. Right. trying to think if I want I think I want it a little higher back by his tail I'm just going to go a little higher on that side and keeping this a little more vertical is fine because you could do a little crisscross but I mean you don't want it to look like grass but all the locks take care of that And what I like is, so even though like Talbot and I are super really different, I told, I understand, you know, you can gain an understanding of mm-hmm. someone else's head. Sure. It's best when we put all of our heads together. It is best. It's awesome. Look, Okay. So John said that they were having a conversation about like I pulled a, a sassy or I pulled a Jennifer. Mm. And he said, what if we said I pulled a Sarah, what would that mean? And I said, it would mean that you put something down. <laughs> it would mean you lost your keys. <laughs> it would mean you don't know where your glasses are. Does anybody see my tool? <laughs> right here. It's over here. Oh, someone else okay. said every time they put it down, they lost it too. You're not alone in that. I mean, my phone projects like anything i'm working on here I, before it comes to fruition i will lose it five times all part of the process yeah someone stepped out of the room and when she came back in the room she heard olive kermit nuts <laughs> which i couldn't remember the colors because i was going to type them in for someone who said it but when i saw olive kermit nuts i was like oh olive current and nuts. I'm really trying to enunciate. Or Talbot, Kermit nuts. Talbot made me delicious coffee. And as he handed it to me, he said it's Ethiopian. <laughs> and John said, what did you say? He said, did you say it's sleepy opium? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong thing. Wrong thing to drink. Mm. Oh, that's funny. Guess what? Now we get to get the locks out. And we're going to do some locks, especially towards our background. Then we're going to do the branch. And then we're going to do more foreground locks. There's a lot of people losing their tools. It's not just you. <laughs> I wish we could see. We'll have to invent the... People can't put pictures, right? No, yeah. In, within the chat? Yeah. Probably. 
I mean, there's reason for that, but <laughs> it could be. I, I sometimes feel a little detached that I can't, you know, see, see what people are see doing. See what people are doing, see their faces. Okay. Lux time. Don't forget about your yarn. Your yarn is lox, too. New hashtag is born. What? All of Kermit nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ah. Oh, I had some colors that I liked better in the other ones. <laughs> I'm going to get those. I had in the other ones some kind of purple. Like a little more golden. Ooh, right. someone wants sleepy opium. <laughs> Sorry, I am stealing from my other locks bag. Okay, sort your locks out. Like darker, lighter, more muted. I like to put a little bit of gray. Like I'm going to put a little bit of light gray. Kind of more, um, more stretched out towards the back. Ooh, there's talk brewing of a Zoom felt along. Yeah, the problem, so. Can you imagine, like, I can't, that I can't, many people I can't, on? right. It's too, it's definitely too many squares. <laughs> it's too many squares. 280, you mean? <laughs> too many? Oh, we're 280? That's we're exciting. 283. I have, um, I have, this one has some purple and some lighter colors in it. So I'm putting that towards the back. And considering that these are farther away, I'm making them a little less defined. So I'm just pulling, um, you know, pulling them apart a little bit. And I can always layer a little bit of my ground color, my foreground color back in. This you guys really want to have fun with. So if you're felting along and you know I'm moving faster than you would, I suggest do you know coming at it again later. I love the way this coordinates. So with the yarn, I'm just gonna kind of break up the cut end a little bit. Oh, I'll just put that right there. I'm just getting some stuff in before we do the branch to start to get some variation. And I want the branch to look like it's over some of these things, but then we're going to put more in the foreground. So after I get some locks on here, we're going to do the outline of the bird and then the branch. I love wool is really similar to using pastels. Um, the way it blends and the intense contrast that you can get from one, one color to the next. So I've got this fun color and then I'm gonna put maybe a little bit of gray. It's fun to get in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of this dark gray down in my corners almost like a to help create a vignette kind of look. Someone is using their large, dense wool ironing board, like for quilting as their felting background, and it's working well. For, and it receives the needles? They're needle felting into it? Yeah. Cool. I think like maybe a huge, Patty McStab is what it sounds like. If it's yeah, a yeah. Ooh, I love those locks with the green tips. Yeah. Oh, your chestnut ones are pretty much for the bird, so I just set them aside. Oh, I like to get a little bit of aqua in here. What's that? 
Oh, that's bag, somebody's the bag that Jennifer put together for me. Yeah. So everybody from work is not I everybody. I haven't seen but... anyone on here commenting. I don't know if they're watching yeah. live or not. But pretty much everyone from work might make one. Mm -hmm. Took supplies to make one. Yasmin is missing the online workshops. Ah, oh, me too. But I'm happy to be making progress on some other fronts. Oh, it looks like spring in my in my pink. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to put a little gray over here, too. It would be... Male wrens defend their territory by singing. <laughs> That's... I do, too. People hear me sing, and they're like, ah, and they run away. Is work stalking the live chat? I don't know, Paul. I think maybe. Is Jennifer on there? They're skulking. Stalking. Right, but... Skulking? Skulking is when you kind of observe without saying anything. Did I just make that up? I'm pretty know. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. <laughs> Can you get too thick coverage? Is a question. I don't know. It's just preference. I mean you don't want to have to like stab forever. stab forever, but the punch tool has 40 40 gauge needles, correct? Cor correct. That's what I put in it, yeah. I mean, if you're really tackling something bigger, you could put thir you could put 38s in it and really, you know, make a dent. All right, I have a feeling that I'm going to have a bald spot right here, so I'm just going to take a little look. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, it's not too bad. I'm going to put a little bit right right here. A little something faint. I'm gonna cut this because I don't want quite all of this lightness at the bottom. If you have, I'm gonna use carob. I use black and it's just a little too, it's a little too stark. So I'm gonna use carob to make my branch. Oh, I went the full 15 inches on this one. Like I said, don't be afraid to open a different um, set of locks that you might have. And mm -hmm. Okay, let's do the bird first because the bird dictates where the branch goes. This down so I can see what I'm doing. I like that. A little more. Okay. I'm going to use uh, rust so that I can really see, really see it, and just pull a really thin strip. I like to do the body as like a bean. <laughs> And then put the head on. I don't know. I just feel like it works better. A bean body. Yeah. To get that like shoulder and back. A reference image here. Judy's our fax person. Groups of wrens have many names, including a chime, a flight, a flock, and a herd. I love the chime. Yeah, that awesome. is awesome. I love words. Now, okay, little drawing, little drawing tip. Template or not, um, you're gonna look for shapes and angles. So my first shape is this, the body bean. <laughs> so I'm coming 
basically where the light tan is on his shoulder out to this point of his chest down and under his belly Then, so that's my shape. The other thing I want to look for is um, lines relative to horizontal and vertical. I can see that the line that goes from the back of his head to his chest is slightly angled down from horizontal. So that is what I'm doing. And then it comes almost horizontally for a little second, but then it angles at about 45 back towards his feet. And I can see that the tail, I mean, we have the template too. I can see that the tail comes up at steeper than 45. I don't know what that is, but, and they hold their tails all different kinds of ways. Um, but I'm, this line is just to give me a reference um, and it'll pretty much get covered up. And I do the same thing with painting. I, I draw my, I draw my um, subject on, like paint it on, um, and then just work over it. All right, so now we want to make the head bump. So again, if you're felting along and you just really want to take your time and get this, make sure you've got this accurately, then, you know, just do it, do it later. Wrens have this kind of characteristic, um, I think what kind of sets them apart from other birds that I that I can see and you guys can chime in um, they have this flat head that runs right to their beak and depending on how poofy they are at the time sometimes they're super fat like like you see the bluebirds all fat and squat and sometimes they're a little more a um, little more lean okay so the line from this is where his beak will be the line from under his beak to his chest is vertical so that's coming straight down and then the chest comes out from that a little bit. And then the top of his head angles up to the right and comes down to the back. The other thing is sometimes they don't have a lot of distinction distinction between their head and their back, almost like they have no neck. And I'm going to draw the beak in um, coffee, which is the dark, the dark color. And I'm just breaking it down so that it's more the size I need. What? Is it too early to eat a brownie? Wrens are known for being plump. Perhaps that why, that's why I always feel drawn to them. The, the beak. Are funny. <laughs> the beak in this image is angled slightly up. I'm gonna take a second to stab around my wren a little bit tighter. And before um, I build, I'm gonna put a few more locks in here. Um, well, I guess that's okay. I guess that's okay. Maybe just a little bit of my light sky color. I can't tell if that's sky or um, or white wool. Oh, it's sky. One thing about not over felting in the beginning <laughs> is you can pull stuff up and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and kind of tweak and change things. <laughs> Did you hear Marcia? No, I didn't. I'm reading, so then my ears like don't work. 
Okay, let's do the branch. I need care of. I hope I have some up here. What do you mean? Carob. I don't know if there's any over there or not. <laughs> Made a buzz. Uh, is this it? Is I think on? so. I, can't, I don't have my glasses on. I can't see that far. Oh no, it feels... Is that right? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you so much. Someone's still felting the first background part. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes every once in a while we get not a complaint, but like it goes too fast or, but I, the, you roll. The, well, I do, but the videos need to be not three hours. Not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, uh, you know, we've got to consider Good. And everybody felt everybody oh, felt yeah. a different. Well, piece. then you can pause as needed, and yeah. I mean, you've made like six of them, so you're. <laughs> this is true. You are well practiced on it. So I'm gonna pull a piece of carob like as wide as my surface, and then depending on, I think I want my branch a little narrower. So I think it's good to kind of twist it and get a little bit of like a 3D element. And then you can take a little bit more wool off. So what happens with a branch is every time it bends, it gets a little narrower. And then it splits and it gets narrower and then it bends and it gets narrower. And that is a good way to begin to um, build your Plus, if you twist it, you get fun little gnarl that can make an interesting shape. So you took that roving, split it in half down the middle? I split it in half, okay. and I twisted it so that I get some kind of a uh, little bit of a 3D. And like I said, it made this fun loop. You can play back half speed on YouTube? Oh, I'm going to do that for my workouts. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you feel like life is going too fast, go and work out with Francisco. <laughs> and that one minute plank is the longest minute yeah. ever. All right. Now I'm going to split this like a... Like one branch is coming this way. I need to break up my formula. I keep doing the same exact thing. No, it's good. It's the good thing that we want to make. Someone's been re-watching so much lately, Sarah, that you're, appear you're appearing in their dreams. <laughs> Just what you want. <laughs> I remember when I was little, we used to play with something. You ever do something, but you do it all day, and then when you close your eyes, you see it? I haven't had that so much yeah. anymore. It was I feel like it was more when I was little. It was like memories forming in your brain, and then... It's like your brain was so visually stuck on... Oh, I am considering, with my branch how far his little feet need to come down. So I've got about an inch and a half, I think. At least she didn't say nightmares. Yes. Dreams. So appreciative. I dreamt that I drove my truck off a bridge last uh, night. What? Yeah. And I, and I, uh, actually I think. Was it like 273? That bridge freaks me out. <laughs> it was because yesterday John showed me a video of a, dude who um 
ran through a drawbridge and made the jump <laughs> as it was opening. So it was a combination of that and thinking about buying the, the old Ford. Oh. And Dave and I were in the truck. We were, on, we were on a bridge. We weren't paying attention. It was construction. We're like, oh, bridge ended. Bridge isn't there anymore. Oh, the road's gone. No. And we're I'm watching the riverbed, which was like a dried out, like not water, but like rocks and creek. And I'm watching it approach and doing the whole, I was bracing for impact, oh, bracing awful. in for impact. And then I woke up. I have a lot of crazy dreams. There's this whole thing with a, like this myriad of animals interacting right next to me. And I was like Steve Irwining it. I was like, oh, this is so rare, you know? And I'm like, this is a bird, like some rare bird and a rabbit and a kitten. <laughs> the bunny didn't make it. Oh. oh, this is my favorite branch yet. Wow, some people know the videos by heart better than us because we film it and then we don't really watch them again. I know. I, I, I think sometimes people are like, what did you use and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no clue. No idea. That information is gone. No more pizza and YouTube videos late at night for you. <laughs> me. Affecting your dreams. Mmm, yes. pizza. Judy said she remembers starting to see everything around her in eggs, tacos, and pillows. <laughs> and now you can add, you can add, what is it? Curry nut butts? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> olive Kermit nuts. Olive, that was close. <laughs> Did you say curry nut butts? <laughs> 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 I'm going to check the time and let everybody felt a little. Two. 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 Good. I think, I You're think, doing good. I think we'll be done by three. You're practically done. <laughs> Get the bird. Stick an eye in there. I was earlier while we were setting up, I had my phone and I was going to text um, Faith, fortunately, okay. <laughs> a picture of oh, what we yeah. made and John's over there and he's like, are you adding to her to the group chat? <laughs> I'm like, because he could see because of the overhead camera. <laughs> was... Is that stalking or stalking? <laughs> Oh, that, I don't know what to call that. Okay. On your branch, you want to hit it with a few highlights. That kind of makes it look like the sun, the sun is, is on it. Give it a little, give it a little dimension. So I think I mixed a color for that. <laughs> I wrote, have fun with yarn and locks. <laughs> Black or carob core branch. If you do not have fun, you have failed. <laughs> Work locks back to front. Okay, that, did, that didn't help me. I'm going to use current, just so it doesn't get too light, sea mist to lighten it up a little and nut to brown it out. And this is gonna be my little branch highlights. Branches are not brown, generally. I think we always think trees are brown. Mm -hmm. They definitely lean more towards grays. And this is an excellent color to have for some shadow areas in our bird. So it was current, um, hush, and nut. Or sea mist, sorry. There's there's three really beautiful purples that I, I mix up. I mix up the purples and the grays. Current. Storm, wolf, and cloud yeah. I mix up. Little variation is fine because that is natural. In our image, the sun is coming kind of from a 
above. Let me see. Kind of from above and maybe slightly from the right. So I'm gonna leave this in shadow. I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight on this spot. I mean, your branch might bend different ways, but I'm just telling you kind of how I'm thinking about it. to see these. I'm going to leave this dark. I might even put a little bit of coffee to darken it up like the um, like the little dude is casting a shadow onto this. Is it shadow or highlight? The light is highlight because the carob. Oh, you're doing two. You have two. Yeah, brushes. I grabbed the coffee gotcha. too. The carob is kind of like the neutral, and so the color we mixed is a highlight, and then I used the um, the coffee, which is it's not quite black, more as a shadow. So that gives us three three values to play with which is great. This softens your branch a little bit too, breaks it up, makes it look a little more artistic and less like a, like a big pile of roving on your, mm -hmm. on your. roving could do right did we send we didn't send the branch color in we did not, not in the we did not right, right. I'm putting a little string of coffee underneath it um, just to really get that that shadow effect this is what I, this is what I love about painting with wool is you can just put a dark right next to a light and it's like pow no turpenoid needed no <laughs> isn't that what you need to put colors next to each other for them not to no not turpenoid What's oh the, the linseed oil, oil? linseed yeah. oil I'm like what are you talking about Yes, well, something that helps it flow. Right. You can use strip on my too. Any. All righty, that's enough of that. I'm gonna do my little bird feet in. Um, oh, first I want to fill this. I've got a bald spot here. Um, so I'm going to fan out probably just gray. That's from your locks pile. This is from my locks pile. Yeah. I love how, I love how they all are going to come out different. I'm going to throw a tiny bit of green, light, light green in there, but I'm really, I'm really blurring this out so that it's, um, kind of distant. Have you done any of these with leaves on the branch? Leaves seem like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be my, I'm going to go down in history as Sarah the lazy felter. <laughs> it's okay. I can't wait to see 
All the wren branches with leaves. Yep. Tammy, now you have to make it and show it to us. <laughs> I just see a spot where I want a little bit of my. All right, now before I move to our little wren, I'm gonna do some more locks um, here in the foreground. And I'm just thinking about a little pops of light. Like I have this super sweet light green in my mix. So the sunlight is hitting a few things. I already have enough shadow, I feel like, so I'm gonna do mid-tones, um, mid-tones and lights. Let's let that one go on top there. I want anything quite that light. I, this is a good bunch right here. It's got a little gold to green going on. And a couple of things can overlap your um, your branch. If you want, or maybe your branch is the foremost This, I said no darks, but this has a really nice bright green on it. Any questions or anything? Um, not really that I'm seeing. Okay. I was going to see if I could like someone's comment, but oh, that's okay. not a feature in here. There's these little dots next to everyone's oh, okay. comments that I could um, do things like reporting it or removing it. And there's an option to put user in timeout. <gasps> I know. Oh, man. Be careful, yeah. people. I could put you in timeout. I think to me, what happens with making leaves is I wouldn't be able to do it without it looking force, like And could force. you use locks to kind of insinuate Yeah, them? well, like I was just looking at this. I had I just pulled a lock that was like kind of leaf um, leaf shaped. If I if I um, you know kind of sculpted it that way, but um, it's just hard to make them look natural coming off the branch. Yeah. Um, in different, in the right angles and everything. Yeah, it must be easier to do more like buds. Yes. Yeah, then... that, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, Tammy just said, may use locks for leaves. Will you wet felt this when it is done? No. You could. I'd be curious to see it. If I were going to wet felt this, I would do it like now and then do my oh. bird, I think. I don't I don't know. It's just a different It's just a different way. Cuz you know, the fo the fox and the hummingbird is very much like laid out very much like this, you know. But um but we wet felt it instead of stab it. And you didn't even have to spend this time stabbing it that we're spending. So All right, I'm gonna stop here because I feel like I'm being a little, a little too random about what I'm doing. What does ironing do to it? Um, it, can, it smooths it out a little. 
depending on the lock type, would it give anything a little more shine? Or is that really just with silk when you iron? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I would be guessing. Bird time. Oh, I was going to do the little legs. So I'm just going to do them in um, in chocolate because they are in shadow, fortunately. <laughs> fortunately for us, they're just kind of a dark, a dark blur. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of current and um, I've got current and chocolate. I guess I could put a little bit of um, bark too. So I've got current, chocolate, and bark. My last one I just did, I'm sorry, coffee. It's coffee. Current, bark, and coffee. The last one I just did in, in coffee, which is the darkest color. All right, and then you want to pull a section of that and twist it into a leg and this one the front one comes out and comes forward pretty steep angle i would think stacy adding little berries or buds or anything would be either a lock or just like a little rolled up yeah yeah it and then the second one is coming almost vertically really from way back <clears throat> because of the angle of the bird we're looking at its butt a little bit so this back leg is coming from this back corner of the bean, <laughs> the back bean the back corner. bean corner and it's not quite straight it has a little bit of angle to it When you iron felted things, do you put a cloth over it or do you hit it just with the iron right on it? Just with the iron right on it. All right, I'm gonna get my locks out of here so that I'm gonna keep my I'm gonna keep my mixed colors at hand. And my merino. Hmm. Hmm. The front angle froze. Sarah's little picture has frozen. Want me to get you on? Yeah, you're not frozen there. <laughs> if I knew the words to Frozen, I would sing it. She's moving there. The overhead one is no problem. Am I frozen in an extremely awkward? It's not horrible. <laughs> I mean, you're not like smiling, but. <laughs> All right, let's see my notes on my bird. just disappeared. Use dark blends on bird. Dark blends, eh? Let me look at my reference page. 
picture. Can I keep going? It's fine, right? Yeah, your overhead's on. Okay. Yeah, and I can still hear you. I just, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix it while the stream is going. Oh. Uh, I think this might be overheating. I'm going to have to be like, <laughs> thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was the branch blend, which was current um, sea mist and <laughs> nut. <laughs> Current butt nuts. Current butt nuts. So I'm going to save Kermit. some of that. And then I'm going to make this a little bit more vibrant and darker with some Marrakesh for the warmth and bark. Sorry, everybody. For the dark. <laughs> I just like filled the screen with your frozen face. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's still frozen. I don't know what the So is. Um, in OBS, can you get rid of that yeah, um, it's, it's gone. But then can you add it again and see if it starts That's again? That's what I just did. Oh. And it's stuck with the same face. <laughs> or maybe turn the camera on and off? Yeah, I'll try that. Okay, so I, I kind of saturated this a little bit more than this was more gray. And so by putting um, Marrakesh and Bark into it, it's a little warmer and browner. And this is going to be the shadow of our bird's belly. And I'm just going to run it along um, about three quarters of an inch wide along his under belly. And this is where I was talking about value. You know, it's kind of important to understand how, how dark is this. And it's actually kind of a mid-tone because even though it's in shadow, if you squint your eyes and look at the reference image, the underbelly is not as dark as the shadow on the log. So you don't want to make it black. Um. I filled the screen with my face. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's working now. <laughs> Wait, you have to look. There he is. <laughs> Everybody, meet John. <laughs> It's always a live stream adventure. Oh, he fixed it. Yay! That was scary, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody who's watching on their big screen TV is like, who's that dude? I'm going to go a little bit darker under the butt. Is that John? With, um, John. with current and bark. Just a tiny little, tiny little blend. And the merino is soft enough that you can break it down smaller. Um, if this is hard on your hands, maybe cut it and then restack it, because I want it to I want it to somewhat fit in the space that I'm putting it. I don't want like great big Yay. huge long. Thank you, John. Colors again for the belly blend. Okay. I will type them in. Okay. Um, well, I started with the branch highlight, which was um, sea mist. Current and nut. Yep. But then I warmed it up with Marrakesh and a tiny bit. I darkened it with a tiny bit of bark. So these these warmed it up. So two it does two things. We're getting the value, but we're also getting something a little more with a little more warmth and saturation than what's on our branch, and that's what we want. And then I mixed a slightly darker one with current and bark. Also from the original highlight color? You could or just, just you could even just mix them together. I do have a tiny bit of the current and bark. Yeah. And that I'm putting in his butt. <laughs> For a little bit. On his rear end. On his rear end shadow. When I paint with wool or paint, I get my darks in first because you want your darks to be farther away. You want them to be a little flatter, um, not quite as much texture, and then you can pop everything off of them, which is very exciting, I think. All 
right? And then I'm going to put, uh, I don't really need to put it there because it's, we'll do that with, um, with coffee. All right, now, before I start putting the lights on, I need to get a couple more darks. Um, this is called a contour shadow where the bird is round, the sun's coming down, it's not hitting the belly. This super dark line under the wing is a cast shadow from the edge of the wing feather onto the bird. And cast shadows are um, sometimes darker than contour shadows. So I'm using the straight coffee and you can use your, you can use your reference to figure out, you know, where that goes. It, it's about, it divides the body in half and it has ever so slight arc to it because the cast shadow is being cast onto a round ish mm. object. And so it's going to have a little arc to it. And that also makes something look round. Rebecca is nailing the ren puns. Good. When the live stream messes up, John has to ren back and forth to fix it. <laughs> Have you guys seen the claw tool? I didn't make a post yet. But it's in the shop now. And it's great for like, sometimes you wanna, you know, kind of lift something up or blend it out. You can also, if you're working on something small, you can use it to hold, um, hold your work. Okay. Oh, I really stabbed that a lot. Okay. Good and stuck. Yeah. Dark lines, chestnut and bark for wing. All right, I'm gonna want chestnut, it's rust, Sarah. I'm gonna put a little bit of bark. I'm actually gonna cut this. Just to start to get the wing established, I'm gonna put a piece of bark right at the crest of the wing. I'm gonna have some lighter color here, but it's gonna go on top. So I don't care that my um, that my bark is, you know, extending farther than the area that it should be. You're working with two needles in that pencil. Right? I am, yeah. Three would be nice in this case. And then towards the end of the wing, I'm gonna put a little bit of this rust. This is just to like, I'm gonna put like more interesting things on top of this, but this is just to start to say, you know, this is this color basically. And I'm leaving my, um, my shadow exposed. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the head. And I'll probably just use bark because he's, he's pretty dark on his little head. He's looking good already. Awesome. Everybody see, I'll scoot this down a little. All right, so we have a nice little cap I mean, you could just put the dark on the top half of his head and then put the white on top. That's what I'll do. I feel like I made this guy's head a little more short and squat than, than it is. He's gonna be an angry little wren. Got to get some felting going on here. I got a lot of poof. 
Oh, I forgot a line. I'll get it. Wait till you guys get to put the lights on. That's the, that's the really fun part. With the um, coffee, I also want to put a line up the tail. Pretty thin. It's like where um, two layers of feathers... like in between layers of feathers. I really like that light gray color we mixed for the sky. I try in my um, in my initial darks to be on the loose side and not too particular. I get more particular as I build um, up in light and detail. So, okay. With one of these mixes, we can get the top of the beak. I guess if you have something a little bit darker is good. There's a lot of ways to manipulate your wool. Um, you don't have to work with the way it is presented to you. Their beak has a slight curve, so I'm putting this line. My initial dark line is the bottom of the beak in shadow, and then this is the top of the beak. And then I'm just gonna fill it in. Okay, this is an exciting moment when we get to put reflected light on his belly. So if you look closely at the reference image, as the bird's belly comes underneath him, we see the beginning of the shadow, but on the edge of the belly is light that's bouncing off of the, um, of the log that he's standing on. So I'm gonna mix um, Dune, Marrakesh and wheat. This is gonna be kind of like our golden color as well. And we can tint it more golden with the Marrakesh or more light with the dune. This might be a little bit light. So as with paint puddles, <laughs> rather than changing my entire blend, I'm gonna take a little piece and I'm gonna add a little more Marrakesh just to darken it up a little bit. We need such such small amounts of wool to do 2D. Um, you know, a whole mm -hmm. painting is... Um, there should be a good amount yeah. left over. All right, so I've broken this down really well and I just wanna kinda, I'm just gonna kinda stretch it out and get this reflected light under the belly. The goal is to leave some of our darker color. Actually, I'm gonna trim it just a little bit because it's a bit wide and I don't want it to cover all of the... You could use reverse needles to kind of tease um, colors together. I'm just using the edge of my needles to make sure I don't get too hard of an edge.
Ooh, that's lovely. That's one of my favorite things to paint. With a blend, I want to get a little bit of dark under the neck here. And then when we put white on, it's really gonna pop off. I'm gonna cut it, um, gonna cut it down because I don't want it long. This is a little spot. I actually cut it twice. Oh, you know what works really well in here is this blue. It just draws a little bit of attention to the face to get a little bit of a brighter color in here. So this is a piece of my yarn. I'm gonna put that there. And I'm gonna put a little bit of this more subtle blend on it. And again, I don't worry that it goes past its, its place because the lights get put on top of it. It's not a paint by numbers, you know what I mean? Like you're not, you're not staying in the lines. You're, you are an artist. Can you explain the reverse needle? Someone is asking. It, the reverse needles, barbs go the opposite way. So instead of stabbing everything in, it's pulling some fiber out. And there's just, a, there's a lot of ways to, to use that. Um, on 3D, it's really fun to layer color and pull different colors out. It's a great way to blend. Okay, now let's get some of our light gold. Um, let's, let's eliminate our white spots here. I have this blend that was um, Dune, Marrakesh, and Wheat. That's what I'm going to use. And then I'm going to intensify some places lighten up some places, um, but this is the basis of what I'm using. I really like this little light spot that's on his, an um, his ankle at the, at the back of his leg. These techniques are incredible. Thank you. Absolutely. For teaching. So I'm going to take a tiny piece of this and get this little hawk at the back of his leg lit up the way it is in the picture. And that's saying to the viewer, there is bulk here because the sun is hitting it. Take our light up onto his shoulder. So people are talking about egg cartons and devil egg trays and muffin tins to keep their little colors like Oh, nice. Between sessions. Awesome. That's great. That's a great idea. There's a little kind of hard to define color here. Um, I'm going to mix some rust and nut. It's like it's not really a shadow. It's just kind of bird feather coloring. That is a, when you are working with something that's multicolored, it can be hard to distinguish what's what, how the color changes because of light and dark or how the color is changing because of the actual color of the, um, it needs more nut. That's a little too red. Are you keeping a little bit of volume over the wing or felting it flat? Right now the wing is pretty flat. I've got the black shadow. I've got the, um, the tone of the brown and rust and I've got the light on the body. So it's very flat. I'm going to use some of those rust locks to create the volume and okay. texture on the wing. Okay, I switched to just nut because the rust was too too potent. 
It's just this this area that's not it's not in shadow, but it's not as bright as the rest of the little guy. some really fun lights on the body. Well, let me do the wing first. I know I put them, I put them, as, do you see them over there? Oh, it's what fell on the floor. <laughs> uh. Marsha dyed these. So this is fun. You get to pick pick stuff out. Ooh, there's some really fun dark, like dark kinky ones. I'm gonna use one of those on his head, I think. Cutting it to make it the length that I need it to be. And I want it to be the spot under his eye. Or the spot, like his eye is gonna be right in the center of this. You could just use wool here. But I like that the little bumps in the um in the lock kind of look kind of like replicate the all of his tiny little feathers. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna pick another one for the top of his head. This could actually be a little more chestnutty. All right. Let's get his eye, because that's going to help everybody too know what's where. You'll need a little bit of black core. Tiny bit of black core, and then just roll her up into a little P. The eye is set back from the beak, slightly higher than the bottom of the beak, but it is not all the way above the beak. If you were to draw a line through the beak, it still would hit the eye. So I'm gonna switch to a single needle for this. So I can really okay. <clears throat> and then the white crest on his head. Well, I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but the white. I'm just going to use um, Serafina white. Comes over the eye. And I'm being a little random about how I put it on here because it does have, it is not a sh exactly straight line. It does have a little bit of um, variation to it. This, <laughs> I can't, I'm a little farther back from and it's at this angle. Okay. So I feel like I'm not quite working on it the way that I would. I'm basically just making excuses for why he might Aww, look I think he's cute. Short, short and squat. I do want a line of coffee right under this white. Trisha said, thank you for helping her stay calmer before her date. Yes, that's so <laughs> exciting. I want all the deets. Just kidding. 
Whatever you want to share. <laughs> You're a tiny bit close to the top of the frame on the Okay, wall. okay, good. I'll scoot down because that'll help me too. I think what's happening is my surface, surface is moving. moving. Oh, it's looking good. What you guys see. I want, an, I want another little... I'm putting a little bit of bark and a little... I mean, you're painting now. You're looking at your... You're looking at your reference image and you're making choices just like when you sculpt. And you're looking for light and dark. I think everybody wants a little coffee. A line of coffee? <laughs> Cream. This is exciting. I'm gonna mix dune, dune, wheat for texture, and Serafina white, and I'm making a nice light yellow to put on the lightest, as lightest spots, and this is gonna make him really pop his head off. <laughs> That's what you're going for. This is gonna make him um, look round and lit and... Um, dune and Serafina white. Dune, Serafina white, and I put some wheat too. Okay. I mean, dune and wheat are, are, are very similar colors, but I just, for texture. And we're gonna go right on this. You can see that spot of light. Squinting your eyes is a great tool. And it's okay if this, you don't want perfect edges, you want you know, you want it to look like feathers. Gets a little light back here as well. So this is just lighter than our initial um, golden color. These are like little wool paint puddles. And then we want to get a little light in here as well. And that's really feathery. So I'm going to let those edges fringe. Oh, there's a little chestnut in here. So I'm gonna mix Marrakesh and Rust and maybe a little nut just to soften it and get this um, little chestnutty area on his butt. You always make it look effortless. This is, I was just thinking, this is a little more, a um, little more blending than the rooster. Okay. Uh, you know, I feel like the the rooster colors were a little more straightforward, and this has more subtlety. Mm -hmm. um, so I cut that so it wasn't so long because I want it to sit right in this, right in this place. Actually, before I felt that down, I'm gonna get a little dark spot under here so it pops off. I feel like I don't have this rear end quite dark enough so i've got um coffee and bark just to not be super dark does the direction that you stab matter as much in 2d as it does in 3d not quite yeah 3d your stab is sculpting 2d your stab is just helping it stick you know mm -hmm. Although you can scoot something in a little bit if you stab at an angle. Yeah, like, flat. yeah. Yes, like I can tuck, you know, I can kind of tuck things. Mm -hmm. and... How 
would you make a pillow from this piece? I actually turned my hummingbird into a pillow. Yeah, I think I think in that case you would you would want to wet felt yeah. it. Even the wet and felted then you, pieces get rubbed up yeah. a little bit. Um, you might have to touch it up after you wet felt mm -hmm. it. With Serafina White, I'm gonna have fun plopping some little floofs down on his face. Now, a decorative pillow that never gets sat on, leaned on. Yeah, it's not like your favorite like TV TV it probably, watching. If you don't wet felt it, at least stab the heck out of it. Yeah. I'm taking care to leave some of my, some of his shadow. You don't want to totally cover up his shadow. He does have a little nice light spot right under the beak. So I'm going to kind of fold this. I'm going to stab it under the beak and then fold it down because it does make a nice line. And I need a little bit of a, um, this was one of my one of my blends, but I need a little bit of sort of nondescript color for the the back edge of the beak here. It's like it's not white, it's not you know, it's not brown. It's just part of his face that's up this white line it was too wimpy painting with wool has a little element of like texture you know it's not well so does painting you can really be painterly with oils and get quite a bit of texture. All right, one more. I like to put a rim around the eye and you can actually get pretty detailed with um, a little white highlight and, and a little white dot. It's interesting to see um, how they're coming out differently. Oh, look, I used a totally different, I used more um, current down here. They're gonna be different every time. So I'm going to use, I'm gonna blend, no, I think I want it to be a little brighter. I'm going to use current and sea mist, so pretty much just purple, <laughs> which is a nice contrast to the rust. Oh my gosh, I made a bat, was that yesterday? And it was too rust, the color was too rust, and I mixed um, a tiny bit of pink and purple into it, and it was so pretty. We all thought it looked like Jennifer's hair mm -hmm. was the consensus. So I'm taking this thin strip and going around the eye and that's kind of like giving him an eyelid. Oh, I got too much wool. I'm, I gotta take this about half size there. And my eye has a little three dimension to it. It's kind of sticking up so that makes it easy to, see it makes it easy to make it look round when it is round. All right. Sarah Cawthon said, you are such a calm, talented teacher. You are the Bob <laughs> Ross of wool. Aww. Bob Ross of felt. You're better than Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Laura said. <laughs> Someone's asking if you could post pictures of the different ones that you made. Yeah, that's a great idea. Might not be today, but yes, I will. 
All right, tiny white dot in the eye is like huge on the wow factor. So I'm, I'm really just rolling it very small and with a single needle getting it. And then also a tiny bit of white under the eye um, looks like moisture. We, we want a little well hydrated wren. I can't be thirsty. Mm -mm. And then I feel like I put a little line, maybe with the, um, with the light sky color, anything that you have that's light, that's like not totally white, you can put a little beak highlight. It's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not work even working like as detailed as you can be. And it's really neat how much detail we can get. I want a little lightness right here at the top of his head. Um, he's looking a little dark. So what was this? This will work. That would be nice too, because it'll um, pull it together. This was this, this color. in color a little bit of wool yeah, does yeah so for the wing i used um i used the locks to really be um the indicator of the feathers because of the wave of the locks and i do like this kind of more um wavy one so i try not to get too um literal i guess you know i like i like the way that is um suggestive without you know adding individual pieces or or we can put some lines and dots, which will just kind of heighten the, the look. I'm putting um, some bark and rust just where my lock ends are, because the lock ends tend to be a little light and I want to get them back to the depth that I want. What do you notice, Kyla? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna make one? I will. I'm very excited. I feel like everybody should make them and then we should post pictures of all of them. Someone asked about the tail, which had me looking at. Oh, yeah, we haven't gotten it. Tail. Tail. Go ahead. So I can take the coffee, take a line of coffee. <laughs> and tell my feathers you have a cast shadow here <laughs> and then the tail same thing um, a couple of a couple of locks that you like only locks that you like not your non-friend locks they're kind of narrating your 
Bob Ross version. We have a happy little wing wing here. Yes. Give it a little friend. This is your wren. <laughs> You create your wren. Your wren is no one else's. Oh, that's a nice block for the it's tail. It's unique to you. We got to get his little butt poof. I'm going to use Marrakesh. I'm going to use the Marrakesh Dune Wheat Mix. People are appreciating that you talk through your choices in the theory, like why. Oh, it helps okay, people. Good, good. Yeah, we want to get every, every squeeze, every um, helpful <laughs> bit out of this that we can. Now, if you are a perfectionist and enjoy nitty gritty detail, you might put the little stripes and dots and um, markings that, that you see. Okay, I'm going to kind of lift the end of the wing up and tuck this under. And remember, anyone can quilt. <laughs> as long as you have every single color, all these tools. <laughs> You know, what's interesting about Bob Ross, well, there's a lot of things that are interesting about Bob Ross. And I'm also going to put this in a real thin strip, right? You can see that highlight, right? There's like one tail feather that's catching the sun. Is he didn't really, you were, you, it was a demo. You were observing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kind of talked like you could paint at the same time, but, um, That's the way I remember the show anyway. Um, his little wing, he's got his other little wing tip back here. You could add that. I would keep it very, just a dark, you know, just a little dark. Bob Ross was a drill sergeant for 20 years. What? He went the other way, man. He was like, enough of this life. And then I see, I also see a fun little highlight where this comes back. I got my butt, my butt too big. Or I didn't bring this back enough. A little highlight right on the tip of this shape right here. The wren is more difficult than the rooster, and the rooster is more difficult than the hare. Correct. Um, it's funny because I feel like the rooster looks more complicated. Um, but as I'm working through this, mm -hmm. I'm realizing that yeah, this is a lot. You know, it's a it's a lot. I think there's just more minute details on here. Mm -hmm. I have rust in Marrakesh, and I'm going to put a couple of light spots um, on his back and on top of his tail because, as, as we said, the sun is coming right onto him. So that'll that'll give him a nice glow. Bob Ross said he'd never yell again when he left being a drill sergeant. Yeah, yeah. Life is short. I'm glad he spread the love and creativity yeah. and... He was in the Air Force, and Captain Kangaroo was a Marine. I think it's, you know, that generation, that was pretty, pretty usual. There was a lot going on. I'm going to cut some of this and make a little bit of, like, random lightness on his shoulder here. Everybody needs random lightness. And every time I make one, I'm, I'm making, you know, slightly different decisions each time.
I hope I don't have felting face. <laughs> like guitar either. face. You know, you know guitar face. Like when people play guitar, they're like, oh, they have their thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's like drummer face. Yes, exactly. I don't don't tell have, me. I don't think you have felting <laughs> face. I, I think I get a little like relaxed and concentrating, kind of maybe. I am running out of steam though. You're almost there. It's a good time to run out of steam. Yeah. Always good idea to take an overhead picture or, you know, a straight on picture and assess because we are so, you know, we're looking at it from this one angle and you can't see anything and I'm completely ignoring his feet, but let's address it and then I'll probably be, okay. So we want a little backwards talon. I'm using like a, one of my medium, medium dark colors, like maybe what I put on the tree here. We just are gonna just throw it over the branch. Like just be like, that's his foot. We can put a tiny little highlight on it. That would be lovely. Carol sticks her tongue out when felting. I'm pretty sure. I, I feel like I might. It's better than face. drooling. I think I'd probably make a funny face. My son does when he's really concentrated. His mouth does a lot of moving. And then always same. has. <laughs> Same over here. Just pull your wool down into the size it needs to be. I'm just imagining his little toe coming around there. put a little pink into the leg if you wanted to. I do not. <laughs> I do not want to. Oh no, someone clenches their teeth. Oh yeah, I'm I'm guilty of that. Someone else's At mouth times. hangs open, possibly with the drool. Yeah, that, I'm <laughs> all of it. I've done all of it. <laughs> Rebecca said you can do it. You just need to find your tailwind. Aww. She's been good the whole time on this. Yes. The oh, Stacy stops breathing. That's not good. <laughs> Felting do's and don'ts. <laughs> Don't stop breathing. Don't be Stacy. <laughs> Don't stop breathing. Drooling helps when wet felting, no? <laughs> Lori talks to the wool and the needles. You, I have witnessed you talking to your I critters. I do start talking to the critter once it's cute. <laughs> Not until it's cute. <laughs> once it's once it's alive. That's more of a, I don't know, I don't do that so much. I don't do that so much, 2D. We should call John. We should call John. Yeah. Look at you thinking, hey, you're on, you're on it. You're on all of it. <laughs> That's my... Fatigue talking. John, we're going to need you to help us end. <laughs> help me end. All right, I'm going to relax for a minute. We can chat. Far away. <sighs> Fiber Fairy Friday, May 24th. First. Yes, that is on the calendar. It's a unique, it's a new, I don't think we've done this concept before. Probably not. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I am Ren.
rendered. <laughs> <laughs> the video will render. <laughs> Any questions? Comments? Humor? Wrapping up. Insights? Woman down. <laughs> Thank goodness for my sleepy opium. <laughs> What's that? You can't say that without context on stream. <laughs> we already explained it. Oh, okay. Your sleepy opium. <laughs> my delicious coffee. Time for the outdoor exercises. Mm -hmm. Always time for felt fit. Definitely. Good job quitting smoking, Deb. Um, my stat. What? Somebody quit smoking? Yeah, they said oh. they, they, their jaw gets sore from gritting, their back teeth pulled over from quitting smoking. Yeah. This is the felting face. Yes. We were talking about, about do, do we have, you know, like guitar face. Um, the other day, my, so the staff gave me um, an electric, like, round, you have very clicky shoes on <laughs> No, that was not just tail. Oh, that was not just tail. I thought Marsha was wearing clogs. <laughs> um, they gave me like a vibrating electric, like the round thing that you would put under your back. And so I was laying on that yesterday and I pushed, there's a button on the end to turn it on. Okay. And I'm laying on it and I'm like, this thing's useless. So I push the button to turn it off, but it goes up another, <laughs> up another level. And I was like, oh, okay. Now we're getting somewhere, and then there was a third, a third level. But yeah, it's 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 definitely good to balance out your sitting and stabbing with um, standing and stretching. Um, someone said this was fun, not heart wrenching. <laughs> heart wrenching. Um, good. What, did we give away silk in the fiber fairy? Will Someone you make me bigger and this smaller? Oh, yeah. uh, this, yeah. Someone um, said, where did we use the silks? Did we give silk away? We didn't. Did we? I don't remember. No. I think I have everything was from the fiber. Was anything tied with silk? No, it was tied with the yarn. There Was there silk? There was silk in the last one. Maybe. The bright colors one. Yeah, maybe. Look, I have so much fiber. I could make 10 more. Mm. All right, you're big. <laughs> you're big. I, let's see, what's, on, what's in the works? Oh, we have an 11-year-old watching. Aw. They like your program. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, Glad so it was the one before. Yeah. Um... The 3D runs are fun, so that's that's in the works. This um, wouldn't be too far from a kit and supply pack eventually. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot in the works. Yep. But, uh, yeah, this was really fun. I was um, looking forward to this ever since we had the concept. January. Yeah. Right? And I, I cannot wait to see how your um, how your how your pictures turn out. Could you use silk in this picture? I you know what I really love? I think that hush comes in a tuss of silk. One of the okay. tuss of silks is the soft purple. And that in the foreground is beautiful. You can use I that mean would yeah. Get a little shine. Yeah, you can use so many different things. Um, in, in, in some of my other ones, I got a little more aqua and blue. This one has aqua. Um, this one has little pops of blue. Yeah. What's this guy? Oh yeah, no, he's okay. He's a little different. Yeah. nice all right well thank you so much for joining us today and felting along or felting along later <laughs> um so I, I would love to see 
pictures on um, fanfare is the best place to share those and um well, yeah we're, we're gonna see you we're gonna see you for fiber fairy if not before um i have a couple of ideas for kind of like we could be live or like webinar type things um for general um art and needle felting information but nothing nothing solidly planned yet but we will definitely be working on more stuff together so um trish have a great date oh trisha <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else yeah. have a great rest of the weekend bye everybody bye Someone's